thank you very much uh, for coming to spend a little time with us. The first question I wanted to ask you, uh, you did the impossible. Uh, for 70 years, no one had defeated the PRI for the presidency of Mexico, and you did. So first off, tell me, how did you do it? Well, it was not me. It was the Mexican people. And by the way, thank you for inviting me to this uh, interesting interview. Uh, I guess after 71 years, most of the people was up to their neck mm. with what was going on in Mexico. And me personally, same right. thing. A lot of corruption, authoritarian government, lack of freedom, lack of free uh, elections, and many other problems that we had by that time. So Mexican people started mobilizing with uh, former events, but at the very end, I came at the right time, in the right moment, mm -hmm. uh, with the right cause. I presented myself much more like an outsider, mm -hmm. much more like a citizen, which I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, people reacted uh, very positively, and we made a huge movement to get the free out of Los Pinos. Right. And what were the, the core values that made it a movement? Because anyone can run a political campaign, but you just use the word movement. So what makes it a movement? What makes it is a uh, straightforward uh, uh, speech to people, mm -hmm. telling them what it's really all about. Because usually politicians uh, make very sophisticated speeches without saying nothing. Mm -hmm. So it was very straightforward in addressing the problems of the nation. and. Uh, I already mentioned some, it was corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, it was this lack of uh, freedom mm -hmm. to be uh, started a business or to create or to innovate. We all depended from government, very centralized, very authoritative. And uh, so people immediately wanted that kind of uh, new life, which by the way is what happened with, no, with all of Latin America mm -hmm. throughout the 20th century. Right. We were in hands of dictators, military dictators, right. personal dictators, authoritarian governments, uh, party dictatorships. Right. And so in two decades, all of Latin America, all of the Southern, we decided right. to get rid of that and go into a democracy and to grant mm -hmm. freedom and justice to all. Right. And uh, when you um, got the movement going and you had people believing in this set of values, what was your plan of attack? What was your act? How did you feel that as playing the role of an outsider, you could actually bring about change? Okay, well, uh, being a marketing man in Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask good about Good marketing that strategies don't. Uh, are not uh, away from you, so I did a lot of uh, good marketing, mm -hmm. uh, which I had the experience for. Uh, at that time, we did not have access to media, mm -hmm. absolutely no access to national media, right. to the TV, national I was controlled chains. by the PRI. Oh, I had to do everything straight in meetings, in rallying with people, right. visiting people in the markets, in uh, home by home, in industry, mm -hmm. in factories. And uh, so I did three years campaign, mm. which was absolutely unusual in Mexico. And uh, uh, PRI was in its zone of comfort. They said, this right. guy, he cannot make right. it. I mean, don't worry about him. Right. And all of a sudden, <laughs> uh, they started worrying because uh, the polls started showing that we were moving, that we were uh, leading a couple of months mm. before the election, after three years of campaigning. Wow. And did you have any models in mind? I mean, were you thinking of other leaders that you saw who had succeeded yeah. that way? Well, when you are fighting a, a authoritarian government and when you're fighting in an arena that is not favorable to you, the concept of, uh, of uh, Mahama Gandhi, mm -hmm. uh, peaceful uh, uh, disobedience, mm -hmm. the concepts of uh, Nelson Mandela, Mm -hmm. the concepts of uh, Martin Luther King fighting against everybody and right. everything uh, would be my role models. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, I wanted to look tough. Right. And to look tough, I let my beard grow mm -hmm. so I look much stronger, although I'm a person of uh, a lot of heart right. and a lot of good feelings. But anyway, I needed to be tough. Right. When uh, I ran for governor first, 
the election was a huge fraud. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I fought for uh, annulating the election mm -hmm. at my state uh, of Guanajuato. And then I took the airport. I closed the airport with the, my followers. And we stopped the airport for mm -hmm. three days. Wow. And uh, we stopped the highways. And uh, so I rebuilt against the system. Right. You, you had to be tough at that time. And, and that's an interesting point, because if you stop the airports and the highways, that could often turn against you, that the people would be upset that they can't use these facilities. Yes. How did you keep it focused on what you were trying to achieve? Well, when you ride on your cause, people understand uh, mm -hmm. that cause. And uh, people knew about that fraud, and we right. demonstrated that the fraud existed. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were convinced that we were speaking with the truth. Right. And it worked. It worked. Uh, although the, my competitor from the PRI had been uh, recognized mm -hmm. as the winner, uh, he never took power because right. in between is when we forced things. And at the very end, there was some sort of an agreement, a mm -hmm. negotiation whereby a member of my party would become governor mm -hmm. on instead of the fraudulent uh, right. pre guy. And uh, so we had a temporary government for about three years. Mm -hmm. I went back to business, I went back to the ranch, I went back to farming, right. and then people called me back again. Right. And next time I won three to one, right. three to one. And there was no fraud possible right. when you win three to one. Right. Exactly. What, um, what made you decide? You know, when, at some point, you, you were a businessman, you were successful, you had your experience with Coca-Cola, as you said. Yeah. What made you decide that it was up to you to go into politics? Two key reasons. One is I was not satisfied with uh, the joy of my heart by working for Coca-Cola in mm -hmm. private business. I joined Coca-Cola with the idea of doing it for others mm -hmm. because I have a Jesuit education, so my life and my flag is the shortcut mm -hmm. to happiness is doing things for others. So I did uh, accomplish a lot of uh, uh, wealth creation, right. job creation in Coca-Cola, but was that not enough. So I came back to the ranch, to my people, to the poor, and trying to be close to them mm -hmm. and do things for them. And yes, I did have much better a reward for myself but not enough right. again. So feeling that emptiness, yeah. I decided to go to politics. Right. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is what I said, we all Mexicans were up to our neck. Right. We, we just didn't want no more right. pre right. for right. another 70 years. So I decided that I should move in and get the pre out of uh, government. Um, and so I started running for Congress first, then running for governor mm -hmm. twice, one that was a fraud, second time I won. And uh, after three years in the governorship, mm -hmm. I resigned from the governorship and I started campaigning right. for three years for the presidency. What else, what is the third reason? Is this we all have within, this flame to do things, this leadership we all mm -hmm. have within to accomplish uh, right. great things. So I decided to take the challenge. I enjoyed the, the challenge right. of uh, beating pre and, uh, right. and campaigning. It's beautiful to campaign. Some say that uh, it would be, and I have said it, that it would be better just to get to the government position uh, would not be uh, joy enough that you have to mm -hmm. campaign and that's right. the best part of politics. Right. Were you able to achieve what you wanted to achieve? Uh, no, of course not. In government, I wanted much more. Mm -hmm. I dreamed uh, much more. I dream of uh, reducing poverty uh, much more. Mm -hmm. Yet, I did accomplish a 30% reduction of uh, poverty in Mexico, but not enough. I dreamed that everybody would be in school, mm -hmm. that everybody would have a, a access to a health system. Mm -hmm. And there we advance a lot because I created what we call the popular insurance, which is the way Medicare insurance works right. uh, for those who have money to buy a policy in an insurance company. Uh, this we did for the poor. So we came out with this concept of insurance and everybody in Mexico today has access to Medicare. It's, mm -hmm. it's surprising, 100%. Right. Uh, people has that. Right. It's interesting to hear you uh, seeing 
in part as a conservative politician and speaks so much about the poor and helping poverty in Mexico. There, is that a contradiction or is that something you think goes together? No, I would say that's my uh, Jesuit culture mm -hmm. of being for others, which is mm -hmm. very socialist, right. uh, very socially committed. And the other one, my Coca-Cola or business culture, right. to be competitive, to create wealth, to create mm -hmm. jobs, to do good things, to be of quality, to be efficient. So I blended both of right. them. Right. So give me your definition of leadership. What, what do you think defines a good leader? Well, number one, that we are all our leaders. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look uh, uh, in hidden places. Right. Everybody is a leader. Unfortunately, many of us don't go within ourselves. We don't learn who am I, what am I in this life mm -hmm. for, what is my purpose in life, because when you do that, you discover that leadership. Mm -hmm. and you understand that we all have it. All, that, all those that don't do this exercise, they go through life in mediocrity mm -hmm. without accomplishing great things. So that's exactly the principle, the core of what right. we do in our presidential library. It's bringing kids, poor kids, mm -hmm. indigenous kids, from mm -hmm. low-income community mm -hmm. to tell them what they are not hearing at home. Right. To tell them you were not born to be poor. Right. You were not born to be a migrant. Right. You were not born to be an albañil mm -hmm. in the construction industry. You were born to do great things in your mm -hmm. life, just like Mahama Gandhi or just like Martin Luther King or just like so many others. Right. We all can be them. And, but very unfortunately, many times we renounce to exercise our leadership. We think that others are born to be leaders, and I am not. And by the way, we... All human beings play both roles. Right. It's not true that leaders lead and followers follow. We, at the same time, can be leaders in mm -hmm. projects that we launch, and we're followers uh, joining others that have a good project. So we play both roles mm -hmm. throughout life. Mm -hmm. But it's illimited what we, all human beings, can do. Right. Uh, look at this Jose Hernandez, this Mexican astronaut. He came from a very poor community in Mexico as a migrant. Mm -hmm. But when he was nine year old, he saw in the window a, a TV set that was on and he saw the Apollo. Mm -hmm. The Apollo um, uh, that went to the yeah, skies. To the yeah. and, uh, and he decided he wanted to be there. Right. 40 years after, he was there. Right. But he had to go to school, he had to get a scholarship, mm -hmm. he had to work hard, he had to go to college, he had to go to university, he had to go to have a PhD degree, he had to learn how to fly a plane, he had to meet all the standards and qualifications mm -hmm. that NASA required, but he was a leader. Mm -hmm. He is a leader, and he got there. Right. And uh, coming back to your time as president, was there anything that really surprised you once you became president and you were trying to move your agenda forward? that uh, you were taken aback, so it can't be this way, or it's, it's, it, why is this so difficult? Well, let me tell you that there's a point in life where surprises are not there anymore. You just know how to see the future, mm -hmm. what's coming, mm -hmm. and you play it professionally. Mm -hmm. You play it with passion and with compassion, right. and you really commit to mm -hmm. your task and to your challenge. So I did know right. what the president was all about, and uh, the huge uh, challenge that it was. So there were not many surprises. And even when we finished, uh, Martin and myself, mm -hmm. the presidency, many say that if we missed the presidency and how we felt, well, we just felt like uh, we were so young to start new challenges, like mm -hmm. building a presidential library, like keep fighting for our right. beliefs and right. Our, um, right. our commitment with the poor, with the those who have not had the opportunities. Mm -hmm. What advice uh, would you give for someone who's generation younger, emerging in politics, making that kind of choice that you made some time ago, I'm going to try to solve these problems? What advice would you give them? Well, I would give them one, go within yourself, get yourself with five minutes in silence every day. Mm -hmm. Think about yourself. What are you doing? Are you doing the right things? Mm -hmm. Should you change what you're doing? Uh, have you committed mistakes? Mm -hmm. So that brief exercise will take you to new energy during the day. Mm -hmm. And then during all days, 
all months and mm -hmm. all years ahead. Uh, dream high, heroic aspirations, right. big aspirations. Don't think that you cannot do it. Uh, you will see right. how you grow up to what you dream, and right. you get there. Right. It's a matter of passion. Mm -hmm. So leadership is on one side, knowledge, mm -hmm. what you learn, what you were gifted with. But on the other side is character, it's that flame, mm -hmm. that power within, is that commitment with good causes, mm -hmm. is that purpose in life that you should have to do good to others. Right. And your leadership just flows and flows mm -hmm. and grows and grows. We never end up uh, making leaders out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's every day. Right. And it doesn't matter if it's a huge cause or a small cause. As valuable one or the other. Right. Win that game that you're participating in. Mm -hmm. uh, win with your family. Do things for your community. Uh, do things for your nation. Mm -hmm. Do things for the world. And it's, it's an endless yeah. uh, and uh, what, capacity. And what not to do. Uh, be lazy, be arrogant. So you must have most of the virtues and you can cultivate them. You right. can cultivate them. Never feel that you're not important. Never forget that you're a great person, that you mm -hmm. can go very high. Uh, and, uh, and never forget right. that the shortcut to happiness is doing things for others. Right. And that, I think, is the key point, serving others. Yes, sir. All right. And politics uh, should be pretty good for that, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's full well, of uh, uh, hypocrisy. I, I was just going to wrap up, uh, but I'm going to ask you this one last thing yeah. then, too, because that is the trick, is politics and leadership should be about serving others, and yet so often it seems about serving self or serving some other interest, not the general interest. What do you think about that? that is the, that's, uh, that's the mark of politics, unfortunately. I think that democracy uh, has to be maybe reinvented because democracy is not delivering today. Right. Look at this nation, United mm -hmm. States. This permanent conflict and debate between Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, each one trying to make the other ones look bad right. and not thinking about good causes that both could be working for. That's what I like about Senator McCain. I, was with him in LA mm -hmm. on this promotion he's doing on migration. Right. That's what politics, that's what democracy is all about, to work for the good causes, no matter what ideology you have. And what you see and learn in the East, in China, mm -hmm. in India, in Japan, they, they say, we don't understand you Americans in the American continent, either Latin Americans or citizens of the United States. You discuss all day about ideologies. Mm -hmm. Ideologies, the East says, is a thing of the past. Right. Today, governments have to be very pragmatic, have to be very committed to mm -hmm. deliver, and to deliver what people want. Mm -hmm. And people don't eat ideology. People right. eat food, people <laughs> uh, like to enjoy, right. people like to have income. People love to see your kids in a school, mm -hmm. more so in university. Yep. People like to see your environment well protected uh, with love and care. People like to see all these things. And that's what politics and government should be all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, this thing that happens here happens in Mexico. 18 years went by since President Cedillo uh, presented in Congress this uh, profound reforms that mm -hmm. Mexico needs mm -hmm. to be successful. And uh, he failed because he was a minority government. Then I presented the right. same and more aggressively. I failed. I couldn't mm -hmm. get him out of Congress. They just wanted me to, to fail in my purpose of uh, running right. Mexico to succeed. And uh, President Calderon tried the same. So mm -hmm. 18 years went by and we couldn't reach those reforms. Cross my fingers, I pray <laughs> that President Enrique Peña yeah. uh, will make it this time. And that's why I joined with him. Mm -hmm. I was called a traitor within my party. Right. But I think we human beings were created free, that the founding fathers gave us that notion of freedom right. so deep that, right. uh, that is so important. 
even to be over and above your party or the color right. of your party or the ideo right. ideology of your party. First is the nation. Mm -hmm. First is the family. First is people. And then the nation and then political party. So let's not forget that. Right. That's terrific. Yep. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Muchas gracias. Really, uh,